Today I'd like to introduce you to your new way um, of thinking in crop research and precision irrigation management. Um, can we use a plant as a sensor to signal the water status? I look at um, the soil really as a bank um, for water on the left and on the right we have the plant being the customer that does daily withdrawals of water. What I'd like to show you is the plant. We can use a plant, in fact, to um, show us the drinking speed as it's affected by you know, different climatic conditions, growth stages, uh, and other factors. Um, a little bit like what's depicted here on this um, uh, drawing, showing a potometer, which is used, obviously, in the laboratory. So can we transfer this technology out into the field to show us how quickly plants drink and when they slow down because of uh, stresses? In actual fact, what we really want to examine is the entire soil water plant atmosphere continuum, which is a big water cycle. Um, and some of the uh, components that have uh, encircled with an oval shape it's pretty much what we can get out of the measurement using soil water data. And I will explain that in more detail. There's a convention of plant available water, which is determined the amount of water being held between field capacity and permanent building point. Uh, the problem with this concept is that part of this available water is only available under stress. Uh, under commercial conditions, what we need to really realize is what is the readily available water content, the water content that is available without the plant going into any stress whatsoever. If you read textbooks, it says between 50 and 30 percent. Can we do that better? Yes, I think the plant is the major customer that determines really when it goes into stress or not. On this picture, on the left, you're seeing a potato plant that has uh, wilted growing in the same soil as on the right. However, on the right we've got a different variety that is just coping with stress a little bit better. So it's a plant that determines ultimately uh, how far it can take uh, water. The tools we're using is the EnviroScan, which is a multi-sensor capacitance probe, profiling probe. Uh, the sensors typically sit every 10 centimeters and are inserted into an access tube. Um, in the access tube, they come to life every 10 minutes for about a second, and the data are recorded uh, on a small data logger. All the data are converted from the instrument via a calibration equation into volumetric soil water content. We have a standard default calibration equation that uh, covers pretty much all the commercial operations. Researchers can fine tune the accuracy even further to the absolute ultra by conducting their own calibration equation on site. The insulation of the access tube has to be done with great care to prevent any preferential pass flow uh, of water going along the tube. So we're using a direct fit insulation where we're drilling inside the access tube that's fitted with a sharp cutting edge at the bottom and then hammering a bit, and then reinserting the auger and that process continues until the whole access tube is uh, installed. We don't really use slurry um, in the conventional situations because, uh, as you can see in the bottom pane, the depth of irrigation in the slurry is going much more further than, uh, than as it's shown in the upper pane, uh, where the water is all going to the uh, third level and not the fourth level as shown in the uh, bottom part. So. Soil slurry is really sort of altering the, the picture of reality, what does actually happen with a wetting front in the soil. And when you do irrigation management uh, decision, it's sort of dangerous to um, rely on the slurry. We've got technology that fits many, many different crops and uh, situation irrigation systems. Uh, the principle is the profiling approach. Um, where the data 
travels basically via uh, a modem to an FTP site. So we got the complete probe and data transmission solution. Uh, consultants or growers um, can download the information uh, using a, a username and password anywhere in the world directly to their computer. They can alter the thresholds. The consultants typically give recommendations. They typically set thresholds and so on. And they can send them back to some of their customers uh, as webified images that uh, a grower can basically quickly consult even on tablets and uh, handheld devices. Uh, it's very easy in, in the field, uh, provided you have reception, telephone reception, you can actually watch your data. And that can be updated every hour, every two hours or so. Now to the data. Um, we have what I'm showing you here is a typical profile graph, meaning that the data from the first 10 centimeters are plotted on top, followed by the next level sensor level down 20 centimeters and then 30 centimeters. Um, this information is very valuable. Not only can we see how deep a rainfall or irrigation is penetrating, but we also see this uh, staircase pattern here. The staircase pattern uh, that you see on the right is caused by the day and night activity of the plant. During the day we're seeing the plant transpire, taking a lot of water out of the system. At night, the step is very small. Uh, either there's no transpiration happening, and we just have a bit of drainage going on. So in this example, we're seeing three levels actively involved in uh, crop water use uptake. And the bottle levels are still relatively flat, so the roots haven't got there yet. We can visualize advancing roots over the season. You can see there start of the staircase effect as it transcends down to the bottom level. When we sum all the information from all levels, we create what's called a sum graph. In this example, uh, we summed down to 40 centimeters. And now the uh, daily uh, staircase has different step heights. If you look at the um, pane with the red bars, the red bars re represent evapotranspiration. So it means uh, here where we got the big step, we got a relatively hot days, and then we got days getting progressively cooler and less windier. Uh, so the staircase effect uh, in the soil declines. As the evapotranspiration goes up again, it gets hotter, again the steps start to increase. So it's like having a little weather station underground. The plant is the perfect sensor to reflect really the water use on a daily basis, provided it's not under stress. It even shows us how quickly things are changing. Here's a young potato crop using uh, two millimeters around the 29th of December, and that rapidly increases to about uh, double four millimeters on the 8th of January. So again, plant acts as a sensor to tell us what are the changes uh, that we can observe you know, with uh, canopy and root development over time. Most importantly, the plant indicates when we actually reach the onset of stress. And that's sort of the borderline between uh, no water stress whatsoever and you know the, the water is readily available. And where the red band starts, the water becomes uh, less available. Um, plotting the, the evapotranspiration top of here, we can see that uh, on the 28th of January we have a nice uh, big drink. The next day is actually getting hotter, but the actual step decreases and um, it gets consecutively less and less and less. Um, so comparing the two days on the 28th and the um, uh, basically 31st of January, we're having the same evapotranspiration condition, but vastly different crop water uses, meaning the plant is really now under stress. It just cannot extract the same amount of water. So to summarize, we, via soil water measurements, we can actually derive quite a number of key components of the soil water plant atmosphere continuum. 
for example, daily evapotranspiration, the onset of water stress and permanent building point, soil water holding capacity, irrigation full and refill points, drainage groundwater recharge rates, rainfall interception, irrigation efficiency, saturation and fuel capacity, determination of the effective root zone, water table fluctuations, and soil profile infiltration dynamics. Thank you. That was just a short uh, overview of how the plant can be turned into a sensor to reveal some of these uh, key components of the soil water plant atmosphere. Continue. Thank you.